Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. The Bible opens with, In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate, and the raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness, and the Spirit of God was moving over the water. In the beginning, there was a raging ocean. And what can we observe from this? Well, one thing we know, God's creation is subject to raging and roaring. There is a built-in instability, an unpredictability, because water by nature is unstable. God wrapped or covered the earth in the waters, the Bible says. In 2 Peter 3, it says the earth came together out of the water and between the waters. Through these waters, the former world perished when it was flooded with water. The former world was wrapped in the waters in all three dimensions. There were the waters on the earth, which were the oceans, those that were under the earth, which were the depths or the deep, and that which was above the earth, which was the firmament. Then there was a drastic change that occurred during the flood in Noah's day. The waters over the earth and the waters under the earth were depleted, prompting God to say to Noah, never again, and for good reason because the firmament had disappeared and the depths were now drained. That brought a fundamental and cataclysmic change to the environment of the earth, affecting the longevity of man and the productivity of the earth. Since God created the earth on the waters, the waters of life can get stirred up and stormy at times. This life is subject to upheaval and upset and unrest, being naturally unstable. So life can produce the perfect storm at any time, at any moment. Another thing we observe is that God was able to bring forth real substance, dry land, his own plans and purposes out of the raging waters. Out of all this chaotic, raging water, where there was no form or order or shape, came forth the substance of his purposes on the earth even though it was engulfed in total darkness. The dry land came out of the waters, arising out of the midst, coming through it, not in spite of it. And God is still doing that today. Only God brings true meaning out of the chaos. That's his promise. One last observation, God's spirit was moving over all of that raging and roaring, hovering above it, not pulled down or sucked into it, not submerged under it, nor overcome by it, but above it all. God is literally walking upon the raging waters of this perfect storm, yet he was not affected by them. Jesus didn't just walk on water. The Bible tells us that he walked on the sea stormy, tumultuous, raging waters, just like the Spirit of God was moving over the waters in the beginning. Jesus walked above the storm. Walking on something is a sign of mastery, overcoming, prevailing. The Apostle John in Revelation 15, 2 says, I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass shot through with fire. And upon this glassy sea were standing those who had emerged victorious from the fight. They're standing on top of the sea, above the fray, having emerged victorious. Just like them, we can stand and stay above the storm through Jesus. Want to know how? Join me next week as we discover more about staying above the perfect storm. God bless.